Hello everyone, welcome to Music Theory Grade 3, and we are in week 1. Today we're going to be discussing cliffs and compass. We're going to be looking at the grand stuff, accidentals, and n harmonic notes. Cliffs. We have learned in the previous grades what a cliff is. We know that a clef is a sign placed at the beginning of the stuff to indicate notes and pitches to be played. We look at two important clefs, namely the treble clef and the bass clef. Notes in both clefs are determined by the use of the middle C. There's our middle C. It is situated below the treble clef and above the bass clef. Although the treble and the bass clef are not the only clefs used in music, they encompass the extreme ends in the highest registers and the lowest registers by use of leisure lines. So there are different clefs for different instruments, but the treble clef and the bass clef are the ones that use the extreme ends of the highest registers and the lowest registers by use of leisure lines which can be placed above or below the staff. The grand staff. What is a grand staff? A grand staff is made up of both treble and bass clef. There's our grand staff over there. You will notice a grand staff by use of this bracket over here. This bracket it helps us understand that these two clefs will be played simultaneously. It is most commonly used for notating piano music since it uses notes above and below the middle C. It can also be used to indicate different voices, namely the soprano, alto, and tenor, and bass, which we'll be looking at later in the grade. Accidentals and, and harmonic notes. We have learned about accidentals. We know that we have a sharp which increases a note by half step or a semitone. And now we introduce what we call a double sharp which can be written or indicated by two a sharp signs or an X. It increases a note by a whole step or a tone. We know about the flat which decreases a note by half step or a semitone. And then we have the double flat where you just write double flat signs next to the note which decreases a note by a whole step or a tone. Let's look at the figures below. Now we understand that from C, for instance, from C, if we move a half step up, then we land on what we call a C sharp. Same with the A. If we move a half step up, then we have A sharp. Now, let's look at what is most interesting. If we move from E and we move a half step up, then what do we get? We get an E sharp. You see that? We get an E sharp. Sometimes we cannot say F because it might not be part of the triad or the scale. Okay? And then we also know about the flats. That if we move from, say, D down a half step, we will land on a D flat. Or from G, if we move down a half step, 
we will land on G flat. Another interesting thing is that if we move from F down a half step, we get what we call a F flat because sometimes the E might not be part of the child or the scale. We also know about our natural, our natural accidentals. We know that all the white keys, all the white keys on the keyboard, they are natural. Let's move on to the double flats. With double flats, we understand that, as we said at the beginning, that it decreases a note by a whole step or a tone. A double flat decreases a note by a whole step or a tone. So for instance if we move from D then we must count one then from there two to the double flat because it is a whole step. We might not want to say C because it might not be part of the scale or might not be part of the chord. Same with the A. If we want a double A flat, A double flat, then we move from A to that, and then that's how we land on the A double flat. It decreases a note by a whole step. And now with the double sharps, let's take so our C. If we alter it a whole step, or rather a whole tone, then we move from C to there, that's half, then from there, then it's a whole tone or a whole step. And we get what we call a C double sharp. There is our low X that indicates our double sharps. The same with the G. We move first semitone, second semitone, and we land on what we call a G double sharp. Double sharp. Let's talk about enharmonic notes. What are enharmonic notes? Enharmonic notes are the same pitch but different letter names. So notes with the same pitch but different letter names are called enharmonic notes. If we look closely at the keyboard, we realize that when we move a half step forward from C, let's say that C, that C over there, we have a C over there, from C and a half step backward from D, we land on the same note. So if this is our C, that will be our D. That will be D. If we move a half step from C, then we land on the same note. If we move a half step from D, we still land on the same note. So from C to C sharp and from D to D flat, it means that C sharp is the N harmonic note of G flat and also vice versa. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day.